Hello everyone, hope you're all doing good. Today we're going to talk about hyperbolas centered on the origin. There are a few requirements we're going to do today. First thing, take understand the definition of a hyperbola. Second thing we'll do today is learn the hyperbola in standard form centered on the origin. origin. Third thing we'll do today is graph a hyperbola centered on the origin. So graph it pretty much. And the fourth thing is learn about asymptotes for more accurate graphing. All right, let's get started. Mm -hmm. Number one, definition of hyperbola. So, like an ellipse, a hyperbola has two foci. But instead of a constant sum, the hyperbola is a constant difference between the focal radii. So, the focal radii form a constant difference. So yeah, let's graph that and show you what that looks like. Nice big graph, easy to see. All right, so we will be centered on the origin here. A hyperbola looks like this, when the x-axis is the transverse axis, which we will cover later. So here are two vertices. Vertex, this is also a vertex. Okay. Here are foci. So here's a focus. Here's also a focus. And then we get our red pen. This is our transverse axis right here. Now let's put it into word. Let's show on the graph what we set up here that the difference of the two focal radii are constant. So let's pick a point, any point, doesn't matter. We'll pick right here on the graph. So we, this distance and this distance are the two focal radii. Let's call this D1, call this D2. So d2 minus d1 is equal to a constant we'll call c. Let's pick another point, maybe right here. So we have this distance and we have this distance. We'll call this d3 and d4. So the difference between d3, I'm sorry, d4 minus d3 is also to the same constant where C is a constant. All right, so that makes more sense. And that goes for any point anywhere up here, down here, over here maybe. So, all right, let's do a few more definitions. So vertex is, occurs when the line between the foci cross the hyperbola. So here's our line. Here's the distance between the foci. Yep. So occur when the line between the foci cross 
the hyperbola. And let's just be clear. This is the line we are talking about right there. So the two foci form a line segment and where the hyperbola crosses that line segment is the vertex. And the center is defined as the midpoint of the transverse axis. And what is the transverse axis, you might ask? And that is the line segment that joins the vertices. So transverse axis, line segment that joins the vertices. So there's everything we need to know, need to know about the basics of a parabola. So, we'll now say that the distance to the foci is called C. The distance to foci is C. And the center to vertex is A. So, Going to our second topic today, what is the high standard form of a hyperbola? So standard form of hyperbola. And these are all centered at the origin. Next video will cover uncentered hyperbolas. So we have two versions of this because they can either be like this, like two C's, or they can be like this, up and down like that. They can be like two C's, so left and right, or they can be up and down. So you have two versions of this formula. So Standard form is given by x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared is equal to 1, or y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared is equal to 1, where the positive term is associated with the major axis and A. Also, to find C, we have a simple formula. It is the Pythagorean theorem, just like ellipses, but a little bit different. It is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, where a is the center to the vertex, and b is given in the formula. Well, a is as well. So let's graph one. I'm just kind of show you how it's done. Third segment of the video. Graph it. All right. Example one. This one wants us to graph x squared over 25 minus y squared over 16 is equal to 1. So what do we need? Well, we need three things. 
we need the distance to the center of the vertex, which is A. We need the center to the focus, which is C. And we need to know which is our transverse axis, our major axis. So what, let's, re let's rewrite it. So we need A, B, and C, pretty much. So we can rewrite this as x squared over 5 squared is the same same thing as 25, so let's do that. Minus y squared over 4 squared. 4 squared is 16. That's perfectly legal. And that is equal to 1. So because x is our first term and it is positive, x is our major axis, the x-axis. And because of that, we know a is equal to 5. So b must be equal to 4. Easy as that. Now to find c, so we know that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. We can plug these numbers in. So we can do also do c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is equal to the square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared which is equal to the square root of 41, which is about 6.4 using a calculator. So let's just write it out, the transverse axis is the x-axis because x is positive in this case. If we had a starting with y and it was being subtracted by x, then we would have a y-axis, transverse axis. So let's go to a new page. Page 3. Let's graph it. We have our two axes. y-axis, x-axis. We have our center, that's nice and easy. We know they're always centered on the origin right now. Now, because we know A is five, we from the center, we go to the right five and we go to the left five because this is x-axis, transverse axis. So one, two, three, four, five, boop. One, two, three, four, five, boop. Right there. So we have a our parabola will be kind of a curved like that. So let's go and draw it in. And pretend that intersects. And our focus, our foci, I'm sorry, is about six point something afterwards. So if this is five and this is about six, and that is equal to zero comma square root of 41. And remember this point, zero comma five. 0, 0 is our center. This point. Oh, I've been writing these backwards. Never mind. Hang on. Silly me. I don't know what I'm doing. This point, square root of 41, comma 0, x, y, p, j. Come on. This point is 5, comma 0, 0, 0, negative 5, comma 0. And here are our second foci or second focus, I guess, negative root 41 comma zero, just like that. All right, let's do another one. So example two. This one wants us to graph negative x squared over 16 plus y squared over 25 is equal to one. So we can rewrite this once again. Let's make it in normal form so we can kind of see a bit better. So we have y squared over, square of 25 is five, five squared is 25, that's legal. So minus x squared over four squared is equal to one, which is our major axis now. Well. We know that this, our y-axis, would be major axis because this is positive. x-axis is now our, I guess, minor axis. y is our transverse axis. So transverse. And we know a is equal to 5. 
b is equal to 4. You can use that. We can find c. c squared is equal to square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the same numbers as last time, which is equal to plus or minus the square root of 41. So we have all we need. Let's graph it. So because our major axis, our transverse axis, if you will, is our y-axis, that means our hyperbola will sort of look like that and like that. So now we kind of know what we're going for. We can draw our points a bit easier. We have our center, 0, 0. And we can go up 5 units, which is A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boop. There's a vertex, and that is 0, 5. I'll get my labeling right this time. We can go down 5 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Boop. 0, negative 5. Right there. There's our vertices. Our foci. Our square root 41, which is about, what I say, 6.4. A little bit more than 6. Yeah, 6.4. We can do that which is about right there-ish, which is 0 comma negative square root of 41, and 0 comma positive square root of 41. So let's draw our graph. Ta-da! There's the graph for this equation. Do one more example, then we'll jump into the next section. I've lined out for us. So example three. This one wants us to find the standard form of equation given the foci and the vertices. So example three, find standard form given the foci are 0 comma negative 5 and 0 5 and the vertices are at 0 negative 3 and 0 positive 3 so Something to notice about all these points, these are all y values. These are all in a straight line up and down. So these are all on our y-axis. And we know that our y-axis must be our transverse axis. It must be transverse. So let's also find c while we're at it. I'm sorry, we have c. We need to find the others. So we have, let's find, all right, let's, let's go back. We know distance from the center to the vertices is three on either side, so A is three. We know that C, the distance from the center to the foci, is five. We need to find B. We have the equation, C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. We can rewrite that to find B. So we now have b squared is equal to c squared minus a squared. We can solve for that. And we can also actually, we're solving for b squared because if you remember in standard form, that's what the equation wants. You can just do that. So we can plug in 5 and 3. So 5 squared minus 3 squared is equal to 25 minus 9, which is equal to 16. So that is equal to b squared. So we have a, we have b squared. We can make a turn into a squared very easily. a squared is 9. So we can write this in standard form now. And because our y-axis is our transverse axis, we will start with that. So y squared over a squared, where a is 9, minus x squared over b squared, where b is 16, is equal to 1. There's our standard form right there. So now, in order to graph some of these more accurately, 
we can learn about asymptotes. Asymptotes for accurate graphing. So all hyperbola have a transverse axis and two asymptotes. Recall asymptotes are lines which the function never touches. They can approach it, but they will never touch it. Um, the asymptotes depend on the transverse axis. That is, if we have a horizontal transverse axis, the equation for asymptotes. So we have two, there's two asymptotes, and it is given by y is equal to plus or minus b over a x. So b over a, that's a slope. This is just um, <laughs> um, sl slope intercept form. There it is. And the second one, if we have a vertical transverse axis, then y is equal to plus or minus a over b x. Now we can go over how to memorize this next video, but it's actually not too bad and I'll show you why in the next video. But for now, let's draw it out. So these, these two asymptotes form a rectangle whose sides intersect the vertices. So let's try that for you. We have our y-axis up here, x-axis over here, we will now draw some asymptotes. These are just general, these aren't numbers or anything, these are still just b over a and a over b. But to show you just what's going on even is important. So here's our two asymptote lines. Let's say here and two, four, here are our vertices. So this will create a box intersecting the asymptotes and the vertices. So here is our hyperbola. And the best thing about this is this is really easy to find because this distance right here, this is B. This distance is also B. This distance is A and so is this distance. So right here would be zero comma B. And this right here, zero negative b. This one we already know is a comma zero and negative a comma zero. So we can use a and b to form this box as well. Then we can find the equations later if we wanted to. And that will 
create a very easy and accurate graph of this. And just to write it out, note the box has <laughs> dimensions using A and B. We can use this for every box we want to make. So it doesn't matter if the hyperbola is up or down, left and right, we can do this for every one. So one more example for today. We have example four. graph and locate foci use asymptotes and they want us to graph x squared over 36 minus y squared over 9 is equal to 1 for all the experts we know that this term is positive so our x-axis must be a transverse axis That means A is equal to 6 and B is equal to 3. Okay. We got that. So now let's find our foci where C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, where we have C is equal to A squared plus B squared square root of. We can plug in A and B. So that is the square root of 36 plus three plus nine, I'm sorry. Something like that, which is equal to the square root of 45, which is about 6.7. Okay. So now this is a horizontally transverse axis. The asymptotes are given as y is equal to plus or minus b over ax, which is equal to plus or minus 3 over 6x, which is equal to plus or minus 1 half x. Just like that. So we have everything we need to graph it. We'll graph it nice and big. So let's start by making our box actually. We know we can go up three units. Here's one wall of our box somewhere right here. We can go down three units. Here's another wall. We can go over, over six units, which is A. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Make a box like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we've constructed our box. So here's the center. And what I like to do instead of using, or just remembering this as B over A or A over B or whatever it is, I'll always construct this box first. Then I'll just connect the corners going through the center. And these are are asymptotes. Just like that. So we don't even need a we don't even need to know what this is. We just use A and B to form a box, connect the dots pretty much. To find these, you can do this or use point slope form to find with the center, but we'll go over that a bit more next video. We know our vertice is at six comma zero because A is six and negative six comma zero. And our foci is about 6.7 and negative 6.7 right there. Now we can draw our hyperbolas, not touching our asymptote lines. So they're a bit thinner, just like that. And that is how we'll draw that. Nope, that length six, 
this is three, draw your box, draw your asymptotes, plot your vertices, you can draw it, easy as that. And that is all I've got for you today, thank you very much. I'll have another video up soon hopefully about hyperbolas that are not centered on the origin and a little bit more on how to use point slope form to find the asymptote equations. Thank you very much, have a good day, bye bye.